reach. And the question today is this, can we summon the collective will to deliver them? I believe we can. When we began our COP presidency, just one third of the global economy was signed up to net zero. Today, it is 90%. And for our part, the UK, which was the first major economy in the world to legislate for net zero, will fulfill our ambitious commitment to reduce emissions by at least 68% by 2030. And because there is no solution to climate change without protecting and restoring nature, in Glasgow, more than 140 countries, which are home to over 90% of the world's forests, made a historic promise to halt and reverse forest loss and land degradation by the end of this decade. And just this afternoon, I co-hosted the first meeting of the Forests and Climate Leaders Partnership to ensure this is delivered. Central to all our efforts is honouring our promises on climate finance. I know that for many, finances are tough right now. The pandemic all but broke the global economy. And before coming here today, I spent last week working on the difficult decisions needed to ensure confidence and economic stability in my own country. But I can tell you today that the United Kingdom is delivering on our commitment of £11.6 billion. And as part of this, we will now triple our funding on adaptation to £1.5 billion by 2025. But let me tell you why. First, I profoundly believe it is the right thing to do. Listen to Prime Minister Motley of Barbados as she describes the existential threat posed by the ravages of climate change. Or look at the devastating floods in Pakistan, where the area underwater is the same size as the entire United Kingdom. When you see 33 million people displaced, with disease rife and spreading through the water, you know it is morally right to honour our promises. But it is also economically right too. Climate security goes hand in hand with energy security. Putin's abhorrent war in Ukraine and rising energy prices across the world are not a reason to go slow on climate change. They are a reason to act faster. Because diversifying our energy supplies by investing in renewables is precisely the way to ensure ourselves against the risks of energy dependency. It is also a fantastic source of new jobs and growth. In Glasgow, we began an approach globally using aid funding to unlock billions of pounds of private finance for the development of new green infrastructure. So instead of developing countries being unfairly burdened with the carbon debt of richer nations and somehow expected to forego that same path to growth, we are helping those countries deliver their own fast track to clean growth. And the UK is making further commitments to support this today, including by investing £65 million in a range of green investment projects in Kenya and in Egypt. I'd like to pay tribute to President Sisi for his leadership in bringing us all together and to thank the UK's President of COP26, Alok Sharma, for his inspiring work to deliver on the Paris Agreement and Glasgow Climate Pact. By honouring the promises we made in Glasgow and by directing public and private finance towards the protection of our planet, we can turn our struggle against climate change into a global mission for new jobs and clean growth. And we can bequeath our children a greener planet and a more prosperous future. That's a legacy we could be proud of. So as we come together once again in common cause today, there really is room for hope. Together, let us fulfil it. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. There we are, Rishi Sunak speaking in Sharm el-Sheikh.
in a, uh, well, a fairly uh, short speech. He said that um, we need to help countries fast track, uh, fast track to clean uh, growth. He also spoke about Pakistan and the awful floods in Pakistan. And he said, when you see 33 million people displaced in Pakistan, you know it is morally right to honour our promises. Uh, but as I say, a very short Mr. speech President. from Rishi Sunak in Sharm el Sheikh. Let's go disguise Ashna Huranag, who was uh, watching that. So, Ashna, what did you make of that? Very short and sweet, Mark. I think he perhaps said the right things, but much of this we know was about symbolism. It was about Prime Minister Rishi Sunak being at COP27 um, after initially saying he wasn't going to be there. In terms of funding pledges and promises, uh, the UK is tripling funding for climate adaptation for fi from £500 million, he said, to £1.5 billion. We understand that's going to happen up up to 2025. He also said he, was, he confirmed that there would be a £65 million uh, fund that essentially supports forest communities. You're right, he did mention the devastation that we have seen in Pakistan. Perhaps that is the most notable climate disaster that we've seen and covered here on Sky News. Some £40 billion worth of damage done to communities over there. Millions of people displaced and taking the lives of 1,700 people over the summer. But no mention in that short speech from the Prime Minister about what uh, pledges perhaps there might be towards helping those developing countries who are currently facing the impact of climate change in the here and now. That is what many of those uh, countries and nations that are taking part in this fortnightly uh, summit will be wanting to hear from richer nations like the UK, something called the Loss and Damage uh, Fund. No mention of that, but right in a way that he did address the conference, just a very, very short speech. Yep, Ashna, thank you very much indeed. And indeed, uh, no word there from Rishi Sunak on this whole issue of uh, reparations. But he did say that climate security uh, goes hand in hand with uh, energy security. That's Rishi Sunak tonight in Sharm el-Sheikh in Egypt. We'll have much more on that at the top of the hour.